This is The Age Case. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell. In a previous episode, I talked about the 77th Brigade bit shoot, the Army's headquarters, Porton Down and Quintec Q, which is all around Berkshire and Hampshire, situated within a 40 mile radius. Today I'm going to be talking about the GCHQ, which is in Cheltenham. Commonly known as the GCHQ, it's an intelligence and security organisation responsible for signals, intelligence and information assurance to the government armed forces in the United Kingdom. Based in a donut in the suburbs of Cheltenham, it's responsible for the country's Secretary of State Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs but is not part of the Foreign Office. It is where many different agencies are working within and in 2003 Edward Snowden revealed that the agency was part of a process of collecting online telephone data via Tempora program which is part of the UK government. The GCHQ's legal basis is enshrined in the Intelligence Services Act 1994 and has three different sections. The Prime Minister nominates cross-party members to an intelligence and security committee to then scrutinize and put the GCHQ to the test with the Justice and Security Act 2013 to provide further access in, to investigatory powers. Then there's the Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group, which is a unit of the government's communication headquarters at GCHQ, the British Intelligence Agency, which is linked to the MI5 and the MI6. The intelligence of the JTRIG was revealed as part of a global surveillance disclosures in documents leaked by the NSA's Edward Snowden. Operational method techniques, all of JTRIG's operations are conducted using cyber technology. Staff described a range of methods techniques that have been used to date for the following effects operations. These include uploading YouTube videos containing persuasive communications to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deter, delay and disrupt any movement. Setting up Facebook groups, forums, blogs and Twitter accounts that encourage and monitor discussion on a topic to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deter, delay and disrupt. Establishing online alias personalities, sock accounts and fake online people who support the communications or messages in YouTube videos, Facebook groups, forums, blogs, etc. which are usually either pseudoscience, false news or something leading people to the honeypots. Establishing online aliases, personalities who support other aliases, sending spoof emails, text messages from a fake person or mimicking a real person to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deceive, deter, delay or disrupt. Providing spoof online resources such as magazines and books that provide inaccurate information to again the DDDDDs. Providing online access to uncensored material to disrupt. Sending instant messages to specific individuals giving them instructions for accessing uncensored websites. Setting up spoof trade sites or sellers. Interrupting i.e. filtering, deleting, creating or modifying web pages, communications between real customers and traders to deny, disrupt, delay, deceive, dissuade and deter. Taking control of online websites. Again, denial of telephone and computer services. Hosting target online communication websites. Contacting host websites, asking them to remove material and basically just being trolls within YouTube live streams, Twitter feeds, Facebook pages and they can ask people who work within say Facebook and YouTube to remove posts that will usually go against the UK government or the narrative that is being pushed and they can easily get involved in such quests like this. In 2011, the JTRIG conducted denial of service attacks, DOS, on the activist group Anonymous. Other JTRIG targets have included governments of Iran, Taliban, Afghanistan and many others. Online false flag operations are also used by JTRIG against targets. JTRIG have also changed photographs on social media sites as well as emailing and texting colleagues and neighbours with unsavoury information and false information about targeted individuals which they can then pass on through the social media sites to other people and it just creates again these bubbles and echo chambers from where small groups are broken up and broken up and broken up and people can't really create a critical mass group that will oppose the government in whatever it would be 
for, i.e. the coronavirus or corruption within government. There's many things that are, people are angry about with the government. In 2015, NSA files published by Glenn Greenwald revealed new details about JTRIG's work at covertly manipulating online communities and internal activities within the UK. UK agencies that JTRIG says it cooperates with include the Metropolitan Police, the MI5, the NCA, the NSA, the HMRC, the NPOIU. It's also involved in what it calls missions, with various other agencies described as customers, including the Bank of England, the Department of Children's School and Families. Info weapons held or being deployed by JTRIG can be used to send bulk emails, spoof SMM messages, impersonate Facebook posts for individuals or entire countries, artificially increase traffic to a website, and change the outcome of online polls. These are just some of the things that the JTRIG and GCHQ have been involved in over the years. British intelligence has a wide diversity of tools for cyber spying and data manipulation. That's what's been revealed in a document recently leaked by whistleblower Edward Snowden. Social network accounts are no longer private. Agents can access data, even hidden, and disable the page if they find it suspicious. And they can even tap into Skype calls and use private email to send spoof letters. How much you spend on eBay or what online polls you have participated in, all of this is also visible to the agents. There's more than 100 projects in the listing for GCHQ's Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group. They've all got quite eccentric code names. Here you've got Angry Pirates, a tool that will permanently disable a target's account on their computer. Now in a statement to RT, GCHQ say that they are not at fault. Well, despite what GCHQ has said, campaigners are saying that if true, the allegations are extremely serious. A professor at a university in London, the University College London, found a new vulnerability in a GCHQ encryption protocol. You've probably heard of the GCHQ, it's basically London's version of the NSA. In any case, Dr. Stephen Murdoch claims to have found a backdoor in the Mikey Saki encryption protocol, which is something the uh, GCHQ actually made to help encrypt voice over IP traffic and maybe video traffic as well. And by the way, while this is a government encryption protocol. A secure chorus, which uses this protocol, is open source. So in the future, we might see other public products using this encryption protocol. Now, I won't describe this alleged cryptography backdoor in any technical detail. If you want that type of depth, be sure to check out Dr. Murdoch's blog post, as it goes into a lot of detail. But at a high level, it really comes down to the fact that there's this master private key. Basically, service providers can have a master private key for this encryption. That means after you've sent encrypted communication, someone like the GCHQ can use this master private key to potentially decrypt your communications. So should you worry about this? Well, right now, Mikey Saki doesn't seem to be a protocol that's used in a lot of stuff. But since it is open source, you might want to keep an eye on it. If you ever find products that use it, that essentially means the government might have an option of seeing into your encrypted traffic. This isn't the first time governments have been alleged to have backdoors and encryption. A while ago, the NSA created an elliptical curve cryptography protocol that apparently also had a weakness that caused a backdoor. And apparently there's some modern security and routing products from Juniper that might use this particular protocol.